Lesson 9, we're going to practice uh, a new technique in ANSYS, which is analyzing a model which has two elements and uh, two materials. And the materials I'm going to apply for this uh, analysis is going to be steel with uh, elasticity of uh, 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.303 and aluminum with elasticity of um, 69 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of uh, 0.334 let's say we have a, a plate or a shell hanging from the ceiling and if um, this is it, and if I can draw straight lines, okay. These uh, beams that are holding the plate from the ceiling are going to be fixed in this end, and they're going to be made out of steel. And this plate is going to be aluminum. And I'm going to apply a load at the center oops, of uh, 10 kilonewtons, which is 10,000 newtons. The cross-section area of these beams is going to be, let's say, um, uh, 25 millimeters squared. And the thickness of this plate is going to be 10 millimeters probably one centimeter. I'm going to give a uh, length of uh, let's say 200 millimeters in here and uh, 300 millimeters in here and this height I'm going to give uh, 100 millimeters. So you see I have beams and I have a shell. That's why I have to apply or I have to pick two separate elements, um, a link and a shell. And as you know, each of them have different um, cross-section uh, or real constants. So I have to define two elements, two real constants, and two materials for this analysis. And how I define this is when I'm about to doing the meshing and as you will see in the example. So uh, with this let's go to ANSYS and do uh, the analysis. Okay we are in ANSYS. Um, the first thing I want to do is to make sure I'm doing the structural analysis and then come to preprocessor, add edit, and add the first element of link, and since I'm doing a 3D analysis, I'm going to pick an, a link under a 3D link or 3D uh, model. So I'm, going, I'm selecting SPAR 8, which is link 8, click apply. The first element is made or uh, added, so I come to shell for the second one, which is going to be a plate, and I'm picking, let's say, this one with eight nodes per um, uh, element. I click OK. So I have a link eight and shell 93. Then I come to real constants, add edit, click add, and the first one I'm going to pick is for link eight. It asks for cross-sectional area. I put 25 and click OK. Then add again this one for shell 93, click OK, and I give thickness of 10 10, 10, and 10, uh, or 10 for all the uh, nodes. Then I come to materials, material models. And for the first one, I just pick uh, elasticity of um, 200 gigapascals uh, and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.303. Click OK. And then come and apply a second model, material model click OK and do elasticity of um, 
69 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of 334 and OK this window. And I come to modeling and I want to create some key points in here. In active CS, the first one is going to be at x0, y100, and z0, or z0. The second one is going to be in this coordinate system. Let's switch to a 3D oblique view so that you will see how the keynote key points are being generated. So the next one is going to be at minus 150 y of 0 and z of minus 100 apply it's in there I'm applying a second or a fourth key point see it's being generated and the fifth one apply and finally this one click OK so the key points are made for me now I go to lines straight lines I want to make these lines and for this example pay attention to how I'm picking the key points for the next lines I'm going from 1 to 3 1 to 6 1 to 4 and 1 to 5 also I'm gonna pick from 4 to 2 5 to 2 3 to 2 and 6 to 2 you will see what this means when I'm doing the meshing. The next step is I'm going to make some areas arbitrary by lines. So I'm making this, this, oh, oops. Nope. It's getting a hard. Uh, okay. Pick that one pick these three lines and make an our uh, area pick these three in our area and finally the final area but let's uh, plot only the lines because I want to use uh, line sizes to do the meshing so I'm only plotting the lines come to meshing size control manual size lines and I want to pick these four lines and say divide them into 15 segments and point to space ratio I click OK and as you see these lines are divided into 15 sections but the sizes of the sections are not similar or constant the ones at the end of the line are smaller than the ones that are closer to closer to the beginning of the line and that's why I told you to pay attention to how I was picking the key points while I was making these lines because initially I wanted to make this mesh look like this finer at this end and coarser at these ends so that's why I was picking this no this key point first and the other key points in the second to make sure that the beginning of my lines was pl being placed at node or a key point one and the end of my lines were uh, at, at either of these two corners of this rectangle I come here again pick these lines now if I can pick this line which is a little tough okay because it's getting a little bit hard to pick that line what I want to do is to come to plot controls numbering have line numbers on okay so that one is L or line 1 so I'm gonna pick line 1 apply divide that into let's say eight segments because the reason I'm uh, doing this is uh, I'm a little bit um, cautious in here so that the number of meshes, the number of elements that I will get after meshing will not go uh, above 10,000 so that uh, my answers will face an error. So I'm just uh, dividing that line into eight segments. And also, I'm going to do the same thing with these lines. 
eight equal segments for these lines. Now let's pick these four lines and divide them into ten with the segment uh, with the spacing ratio of point um, four. Now my my uh, model is ready to be meshed, but before doing the meshing, I want to make sure that the first thing is set correctly. Element type 1, link 8, material 1, and uh, real constant 1 are the things that I define for these four element or lines. So I come to meshing, mesh, lines, and pick these, pick these four lines, click OK, and those four lines are being meshed for me. But as you see, the area is uh, disappeared, so I just come to here, uh, plot, areas. So my areas are in here, and in order to be convenient, I'm going to come here and uh, turn off the uh, line numbering. And then come back to modeling, to elements, element attribute, change all of these things for the second material. Shell 93, material number 2, and real constant number 2, which was for this plate. Just let me make sure if I OK that, yes. And get back to meshing. Areas, free, pick these three areas or four areas. And the meshing. Um, I can ignore this error because uh, it's probably because of my coarse meshing uh, technique. So my material or my model is ready to be um, uh, loaded. Come here and make sure it's static. Apply structural displacement on key points. Pick this key point and make sure that it's uh, all DOF is zero. OK. And then I want to add a force on key point in here in y direction of minus 10,000. OK. My material or my model is ready to be solved. Let's see. I faced a uh, warning. Let's see everything is all right. So as you see, my model is deformed in this direction or in this uh, manner. Come to nodal solution, y direction, and uh, this is the deformation of material of my model in um, y direction. Again, because my ANSYS is not um, uh, very good in or is limited in the number of elements that I can generate after meshing, I was a little bit cautious, and my meshing is not uh, perfect for analysis. So if you're doing this e example in a better version of ANSYS, uh, make sure that you have a finer and better meshing in your model. Um, so this is uh, what you can see. Also, you can go to here and see the overall displacement or deformation of your model. Vector plot, let's say, how it will happen. Let's uh, look at it from front. There's a little bit of uh, uh, chaos in here, which probably is the reason of that uh, warning that we faced. And um, List results, let's see, reactions in this end. The loads that we're, we're seeing in FY is um, 10,000 as we were expecting. But there are some loads in X and Z directions as well, which are very, very small. But ANSYS has calculated that for us. Um, let's... Uh, pick uh, key points first. Okay. 
the capo at the center and then come to here hopefully there is a node attached to um, that key point select it and see node all loads thousand in FY and then node all solution displacement in Y direction is uh, it's pretty small displacement in Y direction in that uh, uh, point. The other thing I want to show in here, which I'm not sure if it will be a correct one, but let's see if we can re see this uh, model in a 3D representation. So I come to here, click on, and well, it doesn't show that to me so probably I was a little bit skeptic about this one which really happened so I come back and list my let's see if I can plot my elements and uh, replot displacement in y direction also we can see no low solution uh, fun misses stresses okay this one is a little bit more um, uh, uh, symmetric so basically what you learned in this lesson was how to apply two different elements and two different materials uh, to your uh, analysis and uh, uh, also do line uh, sizing and lines for meshes and also ma with, with different uh, segment sizes from small to big where you want uh, when you where you think is more critical in your model you can use finer meshing and when you th where you think it's not very critical you can use uh, coarse meshing one thing I wanted to add to this model was uh, gravity but again I, I, I tested this before and because uh, of the limitation of uh, my version of ANSYS uh, the displacement of uh, the model was going above a limited value but you can also practice that you can uh, come to solution define uh, and apply gravity to your uh, model and see how your model would behave if there was also weight and gravity uh, applied to your model with this lesson 10 lesson 9 is concluded